All right. Welcome to this week's Appy Hour. Um, my name is Anne, and I will be your virtual instructor today. Um, today we are taking a look at robocalls and phone scams. This seems to be the type time of year when those kind of resurface, um, especially as we're getting into tax season and things like that. Um, a lot more phone scams seem to to come around this time of year. Um, so it is something to keep an eye out for. We'll talk about what robocalls actually are, um, things like number spoofing, can you believe caller ID? The answer is no. Um, we'll also talk about some ways to protect yourself from these types of phone scams because um, they can be pretty convincing as well as since it is appy hour a few apps that you can add to your smartphone since your smartphone is the primary device where you would be getting um, these spam calls um, so adding to your smartphone some apps that will help protect you against all of these nefarious calls so let's see i think we can go ahead and get started just like the rest of our um appy hour and tech talk sessions you can always leave comments um, in the comment box i will see them as the instructor and try and respond to them So we'll go ahead and get started. So as I mentioned, my name is Anne. I'm a tech trainer with Heights Libraries. You've probably heard me before on here if you've watched any of the rest of our appy hours or um, tech talks. We do have a wide variety of those on our Facebook page um, that you can check out a wide variety of topics, things like how to spot fake news, apps for meditation, apps for learning from home. Um, so you can definitely check those out. After each of these live sessions, um, those are saved to our Facebook page so you can watch them later. You can share them with friends and family. You can revisit the information. And they are also posted to our YouTube channel. Um, so you can check those out if maybe the person you want to share it with doesn't use Facebook. Um, you can check them out on YouTube as well. So robocalls are kind of what the name implies, like our little robot making a call down in the corner of this slide. So a robocall is an automated telephone call initiated by a computer program called an auto dialer. So there's not a person actually putting in your phone number when you receive a robocall. It's a computer doing that job. So that could be um, your doctor's office, for example, reminding you of an upcoming appointment. It could be something automated from your utility companies. So if you hear a recorded message when you pick up the phone, that's a robocall, essentially. Not a live person, but a recording, either that like super stilted automated voice or potentially a real person's voice recording. But if you say hello, they're not going to say hello back. They're just going to keep talking, keep reading their script. Like we said, not all robocalls are scams. Some of them are legitimate appointment reminders. Emergency alerts are done through robocalls because it's just more efficient um, to have a computer program do it than having a person, you know, devote hours and hours and hours of their time to making these calls. So another thing to note is you may have heard of the do not call registry. That stops sales calls from real companies that follow the law. So when we are looking at scam calls, people who are already kind of operating outside of good faith and legal capacity, um, they're not going to follow that registry. So if you are signed up for the do not call registry and you get phone calls that seem suspicious, that's, that's a big red flag for you that I probably don't want to give this person information because if it were a legitimate sales call, they wouldn't be calling me or they wouldn't be calling me between these hours. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that caller ID can be spoofed. Um, now, spoofing is an interesting word. Um, spoofing is essentially faking information. Um, so it changes the caller ID to any number instead of the actual calling number. So this could mean that for a business, for example, for the library, we have lots and lots of different phones in our building. We have lots and lots of different extensions, and we want it to be clear that we're calling from the Cleveland Heights University Heights Public Library, not my individual extension, because that doesn't give you good information. But it can be also used by scammers to disguise the number they're calling from. They might be coming calling from an international number and actually disguise it as a very, very local number. Um, it is legal. You can spoof phone numbers because of those, those business reasons, but it does potentially lure a person into a false sense of security. It's become really, really common with spam calls to have a number show up that's very, very similar to your own. Um, so here, in Cleveland, we might have a 216 number that comes up. You're more likely to trust that. You're more likely to answer it because it might be someone you know in the area that will often have 216 and then the first three numbers of your own phone number as well. They've gotten really, really smart with that, figuring, oh, it's somebody really close to me who wants to get, a, get in touch with me. They can even sp potentially spoof organizations, um, your bank, your pharmacy, the IRS, the FBI, etc. You can put whatever you want as the spoofed name. Um, so just because it says it's calling from your bank or just because it says it's coming from the IRS doesn't mean it is actually coming from those organizations. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later on too. Now we have also seen a rise of text-based scams as well. I know there was one that was going around um, specific to coronavirus where it would be a message of you, somebody you've been in contact with um, has tested positive and there would be a link. Don't click on these links. Um, they are generally bad. <laughs> they are generally going to take you to some sort of site that's going to try and steal information. Um, so, and they often are just kind of cold texted to you. You, there's nothing has been done to prompt um, these text messages to show up. So be aware of that. Sometimes your phone itself or sometimes your service provider will flag these texts as being suspicious. Um, but if you aren't signed up for like text alerts from your bank and your bank starts texting you, it's probably not actually your bank. Um, phone numbers can also in text messages be spoofed too. Um, so keep that in mind. It's not just phone calls anymore. Now they've gotten more elaborate with text messages. So this is a guide from Consumer Reports, um, and we'll talk a little bit later on on how you can access Consumer Reports for free with your library card. Um, but scams start with the fact that technology has made it really easy to call a bunch of people. Um, so that is that robocalling, um, that having that computer program actually dial the number and play that recording. Phone numbers can be bought just like any other mailing list. Um, they can be pulled from public records and they can also just be guessed. Your phone number is just a random combination of numbers. So somebody could dial that number completely accidentally um, or just put in like a random number generator into the robocaller. Um, those calls can originate from anywhere in the world through spoofing it could be coming from Germany or England or India or anywhere and you would think it's a local number because of spoofing. So you're more likely to trust it, you're more likely to pick it up. If you do answer the call, if you do um, interact with the call in any way, if you press a number in order to you know, talk to a real person or something like that, that's essentially marking 
your number as an active number um, that we'll be getting more calls in the future. So actually the best thing you can do is ignore these calls. So this is something that I know is a hard habit to break. Um, it's something that my generation, millennials, have gotten pretty good at because we don't get a lot of phone calls um, or we rely so heavily on our smartphones and on our cell phones rather than a landline phone. But it is totally okay if you don't recognize a number to just not pick up the phone. Um, if it is someone trying to get a hold of you, they can leave a message and you can call them back. Um, I know sometimes this feels really impolite. You know, they're using their time to call you. But if you keep in mind, it could be a computer program and they're just trying to get you to kind of take the bait and put you on this like active call list. It's best just to let it go to voicemail check your voicemail. Make sure to check your voicemail too. <laughs> check your voicemail, delete voicemails so important calls can actually leave you messages. And then decide from there, do you need to call this person back or did this catch a spam call? So it is totally okay. That should be like the subtitle of this, this happy hour. Let it go to voicemail. Just let the calls go to voicemail. There's one thing you can do to protect yourself from these types of scams. Just ignore them. Let them go to voicemail. Now, there are some very common scams that we run across. Um, we've actually, the library's even posted about them on our Facebook page when information um, from like City Hall or from the police goes around because there are people out there who pretend to be from City Hall, be from the police department who are calling people. They're spoofing their phone number again and saying that you need to give them money or give them information in order to avoid some sort of consequence. This also includes things like tech support scams um, where you'll get a call, they'll say they're from Microsoft, your computer has a virus, you need to pay them however much money in order to get it fixed or give them remote access to your computer. Microsoft is too busy <laughs> to monitor, plus they can't monitor every single computer they their operating system is on to call you if there's a virus. That's not going to happen. But the way these scams work, and this is actually something that I talked about last week with fake news, these kind of operate in the same part of our brain, is scams typically scare you in some way. They make you experience strong emotions, fear, anger, confusion, and that activates our lizard brain. It shuts down our critical thinking, and we just kind of go along with what other people say. And that's just how our brains work. People have figured out that it works to override it, so we need to stay smart when we're interacting with these types of phone calls, these kind of suspicious calls. There's also a classic scam that is a family emergency. Um, somebody will call and say, so-and-so has been in an accident, they're trapped in a foreign country. That one might not be working quite as well right now, um, but they've been traveling, they're, they need money, they need help getting out of prison in that other country, etc. Government imposter scams, like we mentioned, City Hall, the police, the IRS, um, these are all really, really common scams. Generally, those organizations aren't going to communicate with you via phone. They're going to send you a letter in the mail. Um, the same is true with your bank. Generally, you get your information from your bank through the mail, or you have the ability to call them back. We'll talk about that in a little bit too. Medicare scams are also very common. You'll notice that a lot of these scams tend to prey on older people um, because you're more likely to pick up the phone, you're more likely to be home um, during the day, although that's most of us right now. 
Um, and there have even been an uptick in coronavirus scams specifically. Um, a lot of things with contact tracing. Now, there are legitimate contact tracing calls, too, that come from the Board of Health or other organizations. Um, but if they start asking, like, super personal information or financial information, that's a big red flag um, that this is not who they say they are. Now, there are, of course, a vast variety of scams out there. These are just a couple that we've heard um, our patrons interact with or that we've seen are really, really common. And with the with tax season coming in, the IRS ones, they start rolling this time of year. So, general tips. Like we said, do not answer calls from unknown numbers. Let them go to voicemail. It's going to be okay. You can combat this if you're concerned, well, maybe that's a family member. Save family members' numbers in your phone, like give them a contact name um, so that you know when they're calling. You also don't want to click on any of the links in those spam text messages. If you're not sure who sent it, if you never signed up for this service, don't click on those links at all. Don't give out personal information and financial information over the phone. Just because someone asks for your social security number or your bank account number or a password, you don't have to give that to them. Especially if you're not sure, well, you shouldn't give that to them regardless. If you're not sure if a call is legitimate, um, for example, somebody calls and says, I'm from your bank, I need this information, ask for their name. Um, they probably won't give it to you at that point, <laughs> but um, get as much information as you can about that call. Hang up the phone. You can be polite about it. You don't even have to like slam the receiver down. That doesn't really work for smartphones. Um, but you can hang up the phone, find the actual phone number of your bank or of whatever organization they said they're associated with and call them directly. Don't trust, like we said with spoofing, don't trust just because your bank's name came up on the screen when you answered the call that it is legitimately from your bank. You can call the bank branch that you typically deal with or their main number, say, hey, I talked to so-and-so, they said they needed this, is it legitimate? If it is, great, fantastic. It took a few extra minutes, but you can feel safe that you are actually talking to the right person, giving a legitimate person information. If not, that's something that the bank needs to know that someone's trying to scam their customers. Um, so it can be informative for you, it can be informative for the bank as well, or any other institution as well. So some additional tips, you may want to register um, for that do not call registry, especially if you are still getting calls from legitimate sales calls, um, you can report violations of the do not call registry at do not call.gov. I will have some additional links that I'll put in the comment box. Um, and if you have any questions throughout this, you can always type them in the comment box. I'll see them and, and respond to them. You can check with your cell phone provider, we'll actually talk about that next, um, to see if they offer any blocking calls. The big three um, providers, because Sprint has now merged with T-Mobile, um, all offer free kind of spam protection um, with your plan, and there is a premium one if you are concerned. And you can also mark numbers as spam in your phone itself. That means any further calls or any further text messages you receive will just essentially be ignored by your phone. Um, my phone is set up so if it's a spam call, it won't even ring. I don't even know that I've received a call. Um, I'll just see if they leave a voicemail, I'll see the voicemail pop up. I don't even know they've actually called. So that can be really handy. And as smartphone gets smartphones get smarter and smarter, it, it there is a lot of stuff built into it that does try and limit these spam and scam calls. So the apps that we'll talk about next, just like the rest of our Appy Hour mentions, um, are available for both Android and 
Andro Android and Apple devices. There we go. Um, so for Apple devices, iPhones, you wouldn't really use these on an iPad, but I guess you could download it. Um, but that is available through the Apple App Store. For Android devices, these apps are available through the Google Play Store. And our first option is from your individual carriers. Um, so these are your cell phone companies, the company you pay your bill to every month um, for your cell phone, for your data plan, if you're paying off your phone, all of that. So this is specific to the big three, um, so kind of the main companies that a lot of people use. Depending on if you use a, a smaller company, they may offer protection too, um, but it's worth pursuing, it's worth asking your provider. For AT&T, they have um, AT&T Call Protect, which is included with your plan. Um, if you want more advanced caller ID, although as we've seen, caller ID can be spoofed, it's $4 a month per line. Verizon has Verizon Call Filter, which is also free. Um, if you want caller ID, it's $3 a month per line. Um, th both of those are apps that you can download, so it's an additional thing to add to your phone. T-Mobile has Scam Shield, which is turned on by default. Um, it will be on already active on your phone. It's also free, um, but it starts at $4 a month if you want better caller ID. Um, but again, spoofing exists. So you can definitely pursue these options because they're already included. You already have access to these free versions. Another popular option is called Haya, um, which is a robocall blocking app. They have all sorts of tech that's built in, um, cross-referencing previous reports of scam calls and business listings and all of that. Um, there is a free version that is available in the App Store, so for both iPhones and Android devices. Um, and they do have a premium one as well, which of course increases the features, but the, the free version is pretty robust. Um, so you would be able to just try it out for free. And then if you really feel a need to go premium, you can pay them a monthly fee and get more protection for your phone. But like we've said, a lot of modern phones have these protection protections already built in they allow you to um, block spam calls your provider um, may already do something to identify um, scam calls mark them as scam likely or something like that so you don't necessarily need separate apps in this case um, but they can be handy and really the best thing is just to be aware let things go to voicemail call people back when they leave a message and just be smart about the phone calls that you're receiving. These are the additional resources that I mentioned. I know you can't click on these links, so I will go ahead and post them in that comment box. So this includes things like the do not call registry um, the Federal Trade Commission Consumer Information page, um, which allows you to see what scams are out there right now. There's also the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission Consumer Complaint Center. Um, so if you are regularly getting these calls, um, you can complain to the FCC. I don't know how much they can actually do, but it's worth getting that information out there. There's also additional information about scam calls on Consumer Reports, and as I kind of have alluded to, you can access Consumer Reports for free with your library card through the library's website, which is heightslibrary.org. So that is what I have for today. That's our overview of robocalls, scam calls, and the apps that can help protect you against them. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comment box. And we'll hang out for a little bit to see if anyone has any questions. 
Like I mentioned earlier, once this presentation is done, it will be saved to the library's Facebook page. You can go back and see some of our older Appy Hour and Tech Talk sessions on a wide variety of topics. I think we have some things going all the way back to like May or April of 2020. Um, so we've been doing this for a while. We are here every Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. Um, for either an Appy Hour where we talk about apps, that kind of all revolve around a similar topic, um, or our tech talks, which are timely technology lectures about things that you might be interested in. What are podcasts? How do I protect myself from fake news? Um, what else have we done? Smart online shopping. So you can definitely check those out on Facebook. They are also all posted on the library's YouTube channel as well. Um, so you can subscribe to the library there, um, see when things are, are posted to that channel. Um, and I think that's what I have for today. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.